So, okay, I just want to ask you a few questions. And the first question I want to ask you is, do you believe in God? Most people will say yes. And, uh, you know, when they say yes, they say, well, that's, that's a good start. And actually, the Bible says that uh, if anyone wants to come to God, they must believe that he is. And so just believing in God is a good step towards drawing near to him and receiving the blessing that he wants to pour into your life. Uh, but here's really what my question is. And this is where I moved my dialogue question. What is your understanding of God? I mean, how would you describe him to me? If I was a person who didn't know God or had any concept of God or any idea of what God was like, how would you explain God to me? And I just give them a time to answer. And, you know, the interesting thing is they have good insight. The most common answer that's given to me everywhere you go is, well, he's the creator. Whatever their answer is, there's almost always something that they share with you that you can take note of and that you can agree with. And after I've agreed with that and listened to them, and I enter into the conversation. I share with them things that I've learned about God from God's Word. That God is all-powerful, that God is a person, that God is holy, and that God is loving, and that He's just, and as a result, He's, you know, that He's, uh, these are different things that I'll go into. Actually, one of the favorite things that I like to share with people is I like to share with, after I kind of go through some of these different attributes of God, I like to share with them that, to me, one of the most exciting things that I've discovered that the Bible says that God is like, is that God has a, a desire as a person to know us personally and for us to know Him. In fact, it, the, the clue for that is found in the very first book of the Bible. It says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, that when God made man, that He made man in His own image. And there's a reason why God has made us in His image. God has made us in His image because God wants us to know Him. He wants us to relate to Him. All right, so let me explain this to you. You know, I, I've got a little dog in my house. And, uh, you know, the fact is, is that I have a hard time understanding or appreciating my dog. You know, you know there, are, there are people that actually will spend their life trying to study the behavioral habits of dogs to try to get in the minds of a dog. They'll never succeed. There are people in my country who live like dogs, but they still won't understand what a dog is like. But you know, I look at my dog and I think, you know, I am the master of that dog. That dog looks at me and I'm pretty sure he's thinking, I'm the master of that man. You know, he sure lives in my house like it. And we don't understand one another. And he's a little dog, and this little dog can go out on the street and when that dog gets out on the street, he can come up to my neighbor's dog, which is a huge dog, and they can look at one another and give each other a knowing look. You know, dogs know dogs because dogs are made in the image of dogs. <laughs> and I can't know a dog because nah, I'm not made in the image of a dog. But this is just it. I can know God, the creator that you talked about, the one that you said loves us and is good to all and all-powerful. I can know that God because He made me in His image. He made me to correspond to His nature so that I could correspond with Him. In fact, that's the meaning of my existence. I won't really experience meaning or fulfillment in life until I come to a knowledge of God and I enter into a relationship with Him. And that's what He wants in my life. I mean, it, it, look, it, I'm not asking you to agree with me, but if that's true, I mean, if that's true, isn't that, isn't that profound? Isn't that wonderful? Usually there's an agreement. And so we are able to have these kinds of conversations. Just this last March, and I'll give this as a last illustration, we'll move on to the next presentation. I took a group of people to Cambodia, and we were working in the Palin province where the Khmer Rouge, it was a seat of Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. And uh, one of the individuals on our team went to visit a man who was the mayor of a village there. And he asked this question, do you believe in God? And this was the mayor's answer of this village. Uh, this mayor said, um, well, listen, I was a Khmer Rouge officer, and uh, these mountains around here during the war were being carpet bombed, were being got bombed night and day. And during that time, uh, all of my friends were praying out. We actually have, we have eight gods in this region that we pray to, and we were praying to all those eight gods, but I kept seeing my friends die. And so I got the idea that I would pray to the God who made all these eight gods. I would pray to the God of gods, and I asked him that if he would save my life, I would try to find out who he is. I would try to follow him and be a good person, and, well, I'm here, he saved my life. But, but I still don't know who it, his name is. I don't know who he is. And I have to tell you, I'm tired of serving my eight gods. That was his answer to the question. Not what you're expecting. 
And my friend said, well, I've come to tell you the name of that God. His name is Jesus. And I want to tell you what he's done for your life and what he wants to do in your life. And this man did wonderfully give his life to Jesus Christ.